Good day, I'm Samantha Allen and this is your GIS News for February 15. Government has secured a staff-level agreement with the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. Head of the IMF mission to Jamaica, Yan Keith Martin, released a statement Friday morning announcing that a four-year agreement had been reached on the extended fund facility. It will be reviewed by the IMF management and then the uh, IMF board would consider it subject to the timely implementation of prior actions to be taken by the Jamaican government and obtaining the necessary financing assurances. Dr. Phillips welcomed the development and said his ministry would be moving quickly to finalize the agreed prior actions. What this means concretely is that the immediate order of business for the country, if we are to be able to get this program submitted to the board by March is that we have to complete the national debt exchange offer with the requisite level of participation by all and also we will need to conclude the public sector wage negotiations. Meanwhile, the finance minister says the national debt exchange announced as part of a debt management program to help secure the IMF deal will not adversely affect pensioners. He told journalists Thursday that the NDX would not impact the interest earnings that are currently due. Dr. Phillips also revealed that retail bond holders, including pensioners with a Jamaican or U.S. dollar bond that's maturing, can elect to receive a new special one-year bond at a an interest rate of 7%. These will be among the most attractive bonds available, which will allow pensioners who need to receive their principal to end cash their new bonds at the bank or broker on favorable terms. The Agriculture and Fisheries Ministry is implementing a $45 million crop production program as part of drought mitigation measures for the sector. Portfolio Minister Roger Clark says 645 hectares of select crops will be put under production in 13 parishes. $5 million is being disbursed to begin trucking water next week to dry farming areas of St. Elizabeth, while production incentives will be provided for farmers in both irrigated and non-irrigated areas. Through this initiative, rather we'll disperse in the coming weeks some $15 million in planting materials to approximately 2,000 farmers covering the full requirements for planting material. The ministry will also offset 50% of fertilizer costs with an injection of $12.5 million for the purchase and distribution of the commodity. Another $12.5 million will be set aside for assistance in land preparation activities. Government is to get technical assistance from the World Bank as it prepares a master plan for the Jamaica Logistics Hub. The master plan will be a template for the country to take advantage of opportunities coming out of the expansion of the Panama Canal. Industry Investment and Commerce Minister Anthony Hilton says the proposed assistance will be delivered by the World Bank Group before June 30. We thank you also for providing assistance through guidance as it relates to business facilitation and more importantly, in helping Jamaica to identify sources of funding within the World Bank Logistic Hub um, initiative. And finally, the Ministry of Tourism and Entertainment has moved to assist the Dennis Brown Foundation in staging the annual Dennis Brown Concert in downtown Kingston. Originally scheduled for February 3, the concert was postponed due to financial challenges. Our Minister of Tourism and Entertainment he came to our rescue through the Ministry and the TEF funds at the 11th hour. And so we have been able to announce the rescheduling of the Dennis Brown concert for Sunday, the 17th of February. The tourism minister says government support of the event is in keeping with its thrust to contribute to Jamaica's sustainable growth and development through collaboration. This collaborative approach will ensure that the full economic benefits that have always come from the hearts and minds of Jamaican people Will accrue, to, will accrue to our artists so that this nation can better achieve growth. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Samantha Allen. Thanks for watching.